But here's the thing I want to do. I can look at all the evil out there. I can watch the news for five minutes and be like, oh, this world. I can lift a paper. I can read threads online. Oh, this world. But I actually think I need to think about myself, too. It's real easy to criticize the evil I see in the world. What about what I see in myself? N.T. Wright has this great quote, the problem of evil is not simply or purely a cosmic thing. It's also a problem about me. I can be really judgmental. I can be hypocritical. I can be greedy. I can be lustful. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on of what I can be. I can harbor these things in my heart and then I can feed them. It's not that hard. You've probably done it too. The evil is not just an out there thing. It's an in-here thing. I know this from personal experience. I know this from people I talk to. I just read a really great book called The Power of Regret. I know this from the book, The Power of Regret. The author surveyed thousands of people and asked them questions about great regrets in their life. He said there's four major kinds of regrets in all of our lives. Foundational regret, if only I worked harder. There is the boldness regret, if only I took a risk. There's the connection regret, if only I would have reached out more. And then the most stinging, painful, but not the most common, but the most stinging and painful are the moral regrets. If only I would have done better. He says that if you study the kind of moral regrets that people have, they break down in five categories. This is the evil inside your heart and my heart. This is why we feel regret sometimes. We've harmed somebody. We said or did something really cruel. If you read this book, you get to read all sorts of testimonials about people, the harm that they did. Cheating on a boyfriend. Cheating on a spouse. Stealing from parents. There's disloyalty, there's subversion, there's desecration. Testimony after testimony after testimony. Here's the saddest thing. Some of these people in the interview, they were in their 70s talking about something they did when they were teenagers and they were still haunted by it. And that just shows me very clearly that the problem of evil is not out there. It's in here too. And the very fact that God doesn't come marching in and stomping on us is an act of grace on his part. Why didn't you stop that hurricane? Why didn't you stop my sin? It's an act of grace and mercy that he doesn't come in with a mighty fist right now. He's giving us time to deal with our own evil, to come to know Jesus, to repent, to turn. This author says, to the degree that we minimize the evil within, we lower the ceiling on how deeply we can grow. I'm not suggesting you downplay the glorious image of God that you are. I am suggesting you let yourself maintain throughout the whole course of your Christian journey a solitary remembrance of just how much evil resides within you. Even as one born again, feel your sinfulness. Let it humble you. Merry Christmas. That's your gift. You're a sinner. I'm telling you today. But we need to recognize that when we're dealing with control versus chaos, suffering, we have evil in our own hearts. And we need to bring that to God. God will put an end to all the world's evil, including the regrets that I have. 